Oh my God, she is back. Olivia Plath, third time on the Sarah Fraser show. And uh, some things have happened, Olivia Plath. Some things have happened. Just, just a couple, not a whole lot. Very minimal. How have you, okay, you know, loaded question, but how have you been? I have been doing so well. I feel like every podcast I've gone on for like the last um, couple of years, I've always said like, oh my God, I'm doing so well. And sorry, there's a, apparently an emergency outside my building. Oh. Um, it's not me. We're good. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good, good. Well, I feel like every podcast I've gone on for the past years have been like, yeah, I'm doing well and, you know, exploring life and discovering who I am. And I think I meant it every time. I think I've never meant it more than now. I know. I was trying to think of if I saw it on your TikTok. I saw somewhere where you were saying how you felt like your skin and your whole um, body just felt younger. And it's so funny because I've always thought, I always compare you to Princess Diana. I, I, big compare. I know you're <laughs> like... Thank I you. do not measure up, but thank you. <laughs> you are, you're stunning. I've always thought you've been stunning for years, but you feel like physically even you feel different. Yeah. So weird. When I look back on like the last couple of years, I can't pinpoint my finger exactly on things that change, but I know that when I look at myself now, I'm like, I don't look as worn out as I did. I don't look as like lackluster in my eyes or whatever. Like I feel more alive and I look more alive. So it's a reminder to me that like what goes on on the inside matches the outside oftentimes. And um, I wasn't able to see it when I was in the thick of it. I've been watching this show since the beginning. And I know I, you're an OG. <laughs> I'm an OG. I, I thought when you guys all first came on, it was unbelievable. Is season six been almost like a vindication for you? I mean, it, does it feel like I was right and now everybody knows? How do you feel about season six? Um, that's a really good question. In in some ways, I feel vindicated that like, not to say I was a whistleblower, but I was saying for years, like, this isn't right. This this family system, I'm not able to function as an individual within this family system. And I'm not able to have a healthy marriage within this family system the way that it is. And I kind of felt like a lot of people didn't believe me. It was just like, we'll just try a little harder. We'll just get along with them a little more. We'll just acquiesce to your husband a little more. And I think I actually, <laughs> without giving away too much, I actually don't think I've been fully vindicated yet. And I think that there's a lot more to come, um, both on the show, off the show in the next couple of years that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, wow, oh, she's not the only one. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, patterns repeat themselves. And when this season started, in many ways, I felt like it was the next right move. Um, to kind of show what happens when you walk away from fundamentalism and what does discovering yourself feel like? And on the other hand, I kind of felt like, do I even do this? Like, is this necessary? Is it just going to feel boring because now I'm wanting to live a normal life like so many other people? And what's even interesting about that? I kind of had a lot of mixed feelings going into this season. Really? Oh my God. I, well, personally, and I've said this on my show, I mean, I don't think there's a show without you. I mean, you... And I, okay, this is sort of like piggybacking on that first question, but I mean, in a way, I almost wonder if you were the catalyst for so many changes within that family. I mean, certainly one person can't take credit. It's not you, nothing you did affected anything, but I do have this theory. I think that one of the reasons Kim is so jealous of you or so angry towards you is I feel like there's something you remind Kim of, like maybe of what would have been, I mean, everything that's like you've done or you've been the first person to do Kim's now doing I mean Kim's on a TLC promo drinking a margarita I mean I'm like what happened <laughs> uh Kim Kim what happened I mean do you think is there any positive for you do you feel like maybe you marrying into that family I don't know woke them up a bit I mean just as like I don't want to take all of the blame for their family dissolving like well, as they knew it dissolving I also don't want to take all the credit because like you said it doesn't just go to one person I think definitely marrying the oldest kid and being the first ones in the family to get married um I think that that shook things up a lot because up until that time they were able to just keep all of their kids like at home on the farm living the lifestyle they wanted and that was threatened when one of their kids left the fold so to speak um I think it it was probably a catalyst in some ways to change some things. I think also 
having the public look at their life and criticize it made them want to change some things so that they didn't appear a certain way or whatever. That's my very personal opinion that not everyone will agree with. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think another reason for the very hostile environment between me and Kim is that we used to be best friends in the way that I understood best friends. When I was 16, didn't fully probably understand what being best friends with an adult over twice my age looked like um, or should look like. But the way that I knew it, we were best friends and we talked every day and spent so much time together and really got to know her as a person and her me. And I think that that was threatening when we were no longer best friends. Um, and I was able to be like, oh, this behavior and this behavior and this behavior aren't good. You're taking advantage of people. You're hurting people. You're manipulating people. Like that was then threatening when I wasn't on her side anymore. How do you feel about Kim now? I mean, she's moved on with Ken. Like she's moved on. She lives in this houseboat. She's drinking margaritas. She's choreographing, uh, Mariah's, uh, sexy dance videos. I mean, like any, and I, and I saw the TikTok video you did recently, basically saying like, yeah, I'm woke. I'm not going back to this, like, you know, dynamic where the men make all the decisions and women are meek. And, you know, you call them out, you call them out when you're like, they're the ones that wanted us to get married. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel about Kim right now today? I think one, when I talk about her, I don't get like, feeling like I'm going to have a panic attack anymore. And I did for years, like for years when I thought about her as a person, just the trauma that had happened in my relationship with her, most of it off camera before the show started. I think that it was so dysregulating to my nervous system as a young adult that when I would think about talking about her, I would like start shaking and I would feel panicky and like I was going to cry. And um, I don't really feel that way anymore. I think giving myself a few years um, and therapy and help and time and kind of working through things, I think I'm at a place where I'm able to feel a little bit more nuanced. I realize she's living a different life um, than when I knew her. I don't think she's really changed as a person. I think that what I clocked behavior like wise, I think that that's still all true inside. It just comes out in different ways and she does different things. And so she's more of a cool mom now to her kids. I, I wouldn't be friends with her. One thing that actually, I was kind of shocked that I felt this after I got divorced, but I was thinking about when I got divorced from Ethan and how we had no kids and I had my own money and I was still so scared to leave and so scared to get divorced, but I was able to because I could financially support myself on the other side. And I got to thinking like, what if I had, hadn't worked a job in all these years? And like, what if I didn't have my own money? And what if I was trying to get divorced and kids were involved? I bet I would feel so much more stuck than I did. And I bet that it would be so much harder than it was. And I had this moment where I was like, wow, even if she fully chose that lifestyle for herself, and even if she was pretty terrible to me and trying to shove it down my throat at the end of the day, when she wanted to make a change like that had to have been really hard. Um, and I, I understand why she immediately moved on to relationship and in with somebody because like, it just, how, how would you do that otherwise? You know, when yeah. you've been separated from the world for so long, how do you integrate back into it? Um, I don't know. It just some different thoughts I was thinking about as another woman getting divorced and knowing what I believe um, and why it made it easier for me to walk away. I just had a little bit of empathy for that. That must've been pretty hard to figure out. And I don't agree with all her choices post, you know, leaving Barry and everything, but I, I do get probably feeling pretty stuck and just trying to find a place where you feel safe and where you belong. Damn. You've got a good therapist. That's signs of a good therapist. You know, when you can come full circle a little, that's pretty good. Um, where, where are you at? Are you and Ethan fully divorced? I read mixed mm -hmm. things online. I, I read like, yeah, not completely divorced. And then I feel like recently, I think all your finances were published. And so is it final? Okay, first off, I don't like the way divorces are done in the US where like all of your business is aired to the public. Mm. I think that's kind of BS. Um, So as like the beginning of this season showed last year, I was trying to get divorced, trying to get Ethan to sign paperwork. He did eventually sign. However, he didn't want to fill out all of the paperwork. Um, he wanted to, he didn't want to like fill out the financial part of the paperwork. So then I was like, well, if he's not filling it out, I can't fill it out. Like I'm not coming to court being like, yeah, I'm making all this money and he's not making any money. Like, 
we're not, we're not playing this game. So I was like, well, if he's not filling it out, I'm not filling it out. So it got, I mean, this is all over like Reddit and the internet. People have already found this out. It got flagged by the courts um, that it had to be finalized and fixed. And that is where it still rests because I cannot get an answer out of him to finally fix that. So yeah, I um having never been divorced before and not really knowing what the process looks like, I talked to a lawyer and I decided that um my lease in LA, you'll probably ask me this later and I'll just go ahead and give it to you. My lease in LA ends um this summer. So I was trying to find like a new place to live where I wanted to settle down, where I wanted to put some roots. And I decided that once I move there and settle down um, and have been a resident of that place for six months, I can just serve paperwork. I don't have to go through the whole whoop-de-doo, hoop-de-doo of please answer my text messages. Please don't block me. Please sign paperwork. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you, how are things with you and Ethan? Like, do you ever speak to him? But I guess you're blocked. I was for a while. I don't think I am anymore, but I don't get answers to let's fix, let's fix the paperwork. So... Uh, why do you think, you know, like you said, you don't have kids. Why, why do you think he's still, you think he's still in love with you? Do you think he wants to get back together? I mean, that psychic told you this. I mean, I don't know. Does he believe? <laughs> what do you think? I, I have no idea. And I don't, honestly, I don't really want to speculate on like where he is mentally. I know that as the show shows, this is not speculation. Like for a while after we separated, he really thought we were getting back together. He really didn't think that I was just going to move on. Um, I know that right now he's very, very angry at me. Um, and there have been a couple instances because I'm still close to family in Minnesota that I've been up there and would have been around him and he doesn't want to see me have anything to do with me. So I took that as like, oh, he he really like hates me now so like that's that but then I was told by some of family members that like no it's because he thinks it would hurt too much to see you so I don't really know like where he is mentally um I want to be like respectful of his process um it's not it doesn't feel great to be hated you know when it was a mutual decision but that's his process and I actually have to see him in a couple of weeks because one of the cousins is getting married and we'll both be there so we'll see how it goes Ooh, okay, Olivia, how do you uh, prepare for that? I guess just, well, I bought a good dress. Um, <laughs> yes. Listen, when you don't know what else to do and you have to be around people that don't like you, just like, make sure your outfit is good. If your outfit is good, then like whatever, whatever you have to say about me, I know it's not about my outfit. Well, girl, I love that. Just have that revenge dress. That is like, <laughs> Oh my God. All right. Well, let's talk about LA and your current situation. And then I'll ask you just a couple questions about, about the show and the show's future. But are you planning to stay in LA? No, you're not. Um, okay. I, when I moved to LA, I had always wanted to live in California. I didn't think it would be a long-term decision. It was honestly, I just had no idea where to go post-divorce. And it was like, listen, LA is a big city. I know a lot of people there. I have a lot of connections. Let me just like crash. Let me just get a year's lease and crash and breathe and pick my life up and figure out what I'm going to do. Cause you know, being raised in a fundamental world, I was raised to believe that like you get married and you start a new life and you eventually have kids. So even though getting divorced was a really good decision for me, it was also kind of the life that I thought I was going to live crumbling. Um, and I didn't want it, but I didn't know what else I wanted. So LA was a great place to just kind of figure it all out. Um, I, part of me is really sad that I'm not going to stay here because it's so beautiful. Um, and I just love so many things about California, but I think long-term putting some down some roots, wanting to buy a house, um, and just thinking futuristically, it's just not the best choice for me. So yeah, you're moving. Um, I'm moving. are you moving East coast with this man that we've heard about? Um, <laughs> I, let me think, Sarah, let me tell you this. <laughs> You put, me in, you put me in a pickle. Let me tell you this. It um, I well, like to do here on this show. You know, we like to rip it. <laughs> like, you know, when you come, say it all. End of end of this season. Um, I talk a little bit more through the process of like figuring out where I want to move and why. And so all of that unfolds at the end of the season. Um, what I will say is, I think next Tuesday, next episode, not today, but the next episode. Um. You guys will get to meet this guy that I, you know, started dating on the East Coast. Mm. And 
yeah, that was, that was actually a pretty wild process. Um, he's a very private person and doesn't really want a public life, so to speak, um, on his own accord. He was like, you know, this is part of your life and it's a really big part of your life. Your entire adult life has been public. So I'll join you for some of it and see how I feel about it um, and kind of play it by ear. So he's a little shy um, on, on camera, <laughs> but honestly, just such a great person. And I feel really lucky to have him in my life. Oh, um, you know, your sister was on this podcast, Lydia, who was so great. And um, she said that when she goes out with you now, you're recognized in airports and places that you go. <laughs> but you got to live here in L.A. for a minute. And I see celebrities all the time. Did you have yeah. any fun celebrity encounters? OK, no, not in person. I feel like when I lived in L.A., I didn't go where the celebrities were. I I was like, listen, I don't got the money they have. Like, I'm just I'm going to go to the beach and the park and all the places where you probably wouldn't meet them. However. There was a couple that maybe slid in the DMs and um Leonardo DiCaprio, you're right. You're no, old. no, 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 no. Um, no. You're very young, but for him, you're old. But you know I'm, I'm no. over 25, Sarah. It's it's bad news for me. Hey, you miss the Leo. Okay. I miss Leo. No. Do you want to know? Yeah. Okay. I want to know. Yes. Let, me, let me let you guess. Let me let you guess. It's from another show that I'm pretty sure you've covered. Um, and like a pretty, I would say a pretty problematic figure that just loves to like get in relationships with girls abroad and send them lots of money and like. Okay, well, first of all, I suck at games. Um, let's see. The problematic sends money to women. It's abroad. a, it's a TLC show. Is it that? It, it's, it's not, it's a TLC show. Wait, is it, um, it's not Angela Deem's ex. Is it Michael? No, no. He gets no. money sent to him. Um, yeah, no. Big Ed. Yes. <laughs> did you even respond? I love Ed. No offense to Ed. He's been no, on No, I did. I did Lovely respond. Hair. I did respond because he was just telling me all kinds of stuff. And I just said, yeah, you like the view? Olivia, you're funny. Have you ever thought about doing stand-up? You're pretty good. Oh, no. I would probably pee my pants, but thank you. Um, Any, like, you are, you, you're, you know, look, I say this all the time, but you are stunning. Anybody, like, okay, no offense to Ed, but <laughs> any, um, like, anyone with a more legitimate career? Yeah, I <laughs> what I mean any like real you know people uh, like different craft you know what I'm saying like yeah, any no, no, no. actors like oh yeah no there was a couple other people that um like reached out or whatever but I just I don't know I think when I was in LA one of the things I told myself was I didn't want to date in LA because I thought you know as a like as a person yeah I want to be in a really healthy loving relationship and I think that I wanted that so much that I was kind of afraid that moving to LA if I just was going on all these dates and everything I would end up falling in love with someone because I can find something to love about so many people and I was like I think I would end up falling in love and then dating and then I just don't need to be doing that right away so a boundary I set for myself was I wasn't going to date in LA if I wanted to go on dates outside of LA when I was traveling for work that was totally fine um, or like traveling abroad, I was like, yeah, I, I have a little summer fling abroad, but I'm not going to date in LA. That's my home space to just kind of figure myself out and focus on me and my life. Um, so there's a lot of really kind, nice people out there and I was lucky to meet some, but just wasn't for me. Yeah. It just wasn't for you. Um, it, how, okay. Let's talk a little bit about how are you with your family when your sister was on, you know, have you guys made any progress with your parents? I mean, you're so brave to share about this fundy culture that you guys grew up in. I can't imagine what it must be like. It's so hard to break from that. Where are you at with your family? Um, so I'm close to my sister, Lydia, of course. I don't really talk to the rest of my family. Occasionally, I'll have a phone conversation with, you know, another sibling. But for the most part, my family has um, kept to the fundamental lifestyle and when I, for a while, I wasn't sure how to use my platform. And I think I've kind of decided that there's so many people that would relate to walking away from fundamentalism and losing your family or your marriage or whatever it is out of that. And that's something that I can relate to a lot of people on. Um, I don't have a lot of advice for them, but I can stand in solidarity with them. And I, I do tell these people that walk away from it, like you, 
there's pros and cons to each. If you keep your family in your life, but they're a part of that, you're signing up for chaos and judgment and um, just constant stress from these relationships and trying to figure out like, how do I love this person, but also be myself. And if you don't have them in your life, then you're signing up for the void of not having a family or parents or anything like that. And you just have to pick which, whatever one is easiest for you to navigate. Um, for me, my parents helped me with that decision. I'm blocked by both of them. And it's honestly okay. Cause I don't have that chaos. I don't have to deal with that. Um, there is a void of like not having the people that you spent your entire life with so far. But I think that I have found a really loving, great supportive community and friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have my other sister, Lydia. And I think that that's what's best for me, at least for now. Maybe my parents will change someday down the road. Maybe some of my siblings will leave fundamentalism and it'll be easier to navigate your relationship. But for right now, it feels kind of safe to, to leave all of that behind. Yeah. No, you've got to take care of you, what's best and your mental health and moving forward. But it's too bad. I, I keep hoping you girls will have that they'll see because you both you and your sister conduct yourself so well on the show. I mean, I would think your parents would be so proud of the fact, you know, some of these reality shows, it's like the women fight each other. You know, I mean, you really like we've watched your personal journal for the past five years. That's impressive. And you've kept it together off screen. You know, you have found a voice for yourself. I mean, you really are. I would think what a lot of parents are hoping their daughter would become. It's too bad. They don't see some light in that, even if they disagree with divorce or they think you should be, you know, in the church. I'm hoping for you. It's, it's hard to control people who are awake and not asleep. Just kind of like I said in my TikTok recently, like I, I don't want to go back to that. I want to be able to think for myself. And that's threatening to people who benefit from you not thinking for yourself. You're certainly, you're used to a lot of criticism. You, you've, people have all kinds of opinions on you. Um, oh yeah, they do. It's okay. I do too. That's what I like about you. Don't stop. I love the videos. Don't stop. Because if you don't keep, if you don't speak the narrative, somebody else will do it. So keep mm -hmm. doing, your inter doing your videos. What did you make though of, you know, Micah revealed his girlfriend and this poor mm -hmm. woman, I mean, has been dragged. They've called her trans. They say she's a man. I mean, all these things to the point she posted last week, or I think these pictures of her as a little girl proving she was a girl. What do you... Uh, I mean, Mariah's been dragged now. I mean, a lot of people mm -hmm. really don't like her. What do you make of, um, I guess, just the con relentless attacks you all get? I mean, I think, I think it speaks to parasocial relationships that we have today where we feel like it's okay to say really horrible things about somebody else's life. And listen, I... The thing I, the retort that people give me back is like, well, you signed up to be on a show. Like if you can't take the heat, then don't have your life be public. And I think that there's a really big difference in watching and analyzing people's behavior on TV and, you know, relating to it in your own life of like, oh, I've known people that acted like that. I don't like that behavior. Or why did someone do what they did? There's a difference in analyzing and learning from, or like being entertained by reality TV and purposely seeking people out online and bullying them for how they look or transvestigating them or like, um, like that to me is, is really sad. And I recently did go on social media and stand in solidarity for Veronica, Micah's girlfriend, because it doesn't matter if I don't know her as a person, the way that people have been bullying her is not okay. Yeah. Um, and awesome. yeah. The point that I made sure to even include in the video is like, I don't, people like Kim and Mariah who also get dragged on social media, I don't think they're great people. I don't like them, but they still don't deserve that kind of bullying. And um, I think I'm just realizing more and more how, how our society treats women. And I've always known it, right? That like, I grew up in a patriarchal world and I see it in society all around us. But I think that I'm realizing more and more how ingrained it is to even women to participate in these misogynistic systems of tearing other women down for what they look like, or if they're feminine enough, or if they're too masculine, or like all of these things. And I want no part in it. Um, something that <laughs> I was telling my boyfriend, I was like, you know what I'm really proud of myself for? when people leave really nasty comments on my Instagram, my brain can immediately come back with like a really nasty thing oh, to I say. Know. 
And then I was like, but something I'm really proud of is when I sit for a minute and I go, hmm, okay, how do I give this back to them without returning the same hate that they gave me? If someone's leaving a hateful comment about how I look or whatever, if it's included in there, how do I, how do I like give it back to them without bullying them? Um, and I like, I'm really proud of myself when I like come up with this little like zing or like little comeback. That's not bullying. It's just giving them back what they gave me without saying the same hateful things. Um, and yeah, I saw my boyfriend, I was like, I'm really proud when I feel like I nailed that. Um, and then, you know, people like my comment back, like, yeah, people tell you to ignore all the stuff online. And there's times that I do. And then there's times I just can't. Oh. And I'm sharpening my wit when I get back to them. Telling you, stand-up comedian, maybe. Maybe we need to see that. Um, what how, What about you and Mariah? I thought that scene was so... Uh, first of all, I think season six is the best yet because there's so much going on. People are forced to have these conversations that I think have been below the surface for since the start of the show. I thought you did a great job handling that kind of scene where it wasn't really an apology. And I, I actually have a lot of empathy for Mariah because I feel like mm -hmm. something is going on there. Like she seems so... I don't know. It just seems dark at times. I'm sure she's young, navigating it all on television. But um, would it like? Did you feel that you walked away from that scene where you guys did have maybe some neutrality, or did you kind of leave there and you were more angry? How did that go after? I feel like I walked into that day going, okay, I've got closure for how my relationship ended with her, but I'll hear her out. And then I left going, wait, <laughs> what? Um, I feel like, yeah, I, it, to me, it did not feel like a real apology. Right. However, I think I had like said this in an interview and there's so many hours of interviews that never make it into a show. But I think that I had said something along the lines of like, even if it wasn't a real apology, I've never gotten something that close to an apology from anyone else in her family. And so I have, I have to give her credit for that. Um, I think I walked away feeling maybe a little bit more neutral at that time. There's things I've learned since that I'm like, oh, I don't feel neutral anymore. Like you can't just hurt other people like you did me, but you can't just continue this pattern in your life. Um, but yeah, I I don't even know what all was included in the rest of this season. I'm kind of in the dark, but I guess finish watching the season and then <laughs> we can talk again. <laughs> well, what do you what do you make of the fact? I mean, you you've put a lot out there clearly about your former marriage. I mean, the criticism a little of Mariah online is like there's all this illusion all the time to like she's been wronged by I don't know if we're still referring to Max, the ex-boyfriend or new ex-boyfriend. No. Yes. Okay, but are you a little resentful of the fact, I mean, here you are, Micah, Kim, Barry, everybody sort of has to put their relationship. Why don't we see what's really going on? Does that bother you? Um, listen, I, it makes sense to me because I, I used to be friends with a lot of other people on the cast and I don't think that they're really honest upfront people. So like, it makes sense to me that they kind of present different things and, you know, cover stuff up. The only thing I really want to be focused on and worried about when it comes to that is like making sure that I'm not doing that. Um, making sure that I'm being honest and upfront and whatever they do, whether that's a contrast to what they do or whether that's just completely separate me, like, I just, yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm honest with my life. Um, Cause I know sometimes I see criticism of the show of like, they're not honest. They don't share things with us. And they're like, and sometimes that hurts. Cause I'm like, no, but I try to be like, I, I try to be as real as I can. Um, and I realize that it all gets lumped in together. Like we all get lumped in together in the same show, but yeah, I, I think I might be wrong, but I think you guys will get to see the guy she's talking about sometime later this season. I okay. Think so. Okay. So we've moved on from Max. Um, are we going to address Kim's DUI? Do you think at all? I mean, that was like a shocking moment. Okay. We're not, we're moving on from that. I mean, that was really surprising. Like for someone who had a lot of criticism of everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, I, I mean, I don't know. I, it, We'll move on from that. I mean, that's sort of like she has to really address that. But that was like really shocking. And I hope we're going to get some further, I guess, answers on it. But yeah, there's sometimes a lot that I'm like tempted to say. And then I'm like, listen, 
is that in my best interest? That's not my life anymore. I don't, I don't have to say those things. I don't have a need to. And my time is probably better spent starting like a support group for people that like dated their kids. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask, like, you don't think she should be in rehab. I'm sort of like, is she, did she, should she be in a rehab? Like this seems like pretty, I mean, she was like double the legal limit here. Uh, yeah. I stay out of that. <laughs> I stay out of that. I'm over here. I'm over here drinking my skinny mark going, nope. <laughs> Okay. Well, what do you make of Barry? Like, I mean, obviously he's your former father-in-law, but I mean, are you impressed? He's gotten hotter. I mean, he's taking the glasses off and I don't know if he's using roids or whatever, but the guy's like Jack. I mean, are you impressed with his makeover? Um, I know I've been asked this on a podcast before and I feel like I was pretty gracious with what I said. And then later I was like, man, I could have been more honest, but also no need to throw dirt. I don't know. Their family, like when, when things are hard, they deal with things by going to the gym. I don't think it's the best way to deal with things. And it usually backfires, but it's also not my life. So teach their own. Oh, I mean, look, I, you don't even, I'll comment on this, but the, I wish he would say how he truly feels about Kim because they set the camera on him and you can see him seething, seething and biting yeah. his eye. I'm like, dude, let it out. We we know, like we know what Kim is somewhat like. So just say it, you know, but I don't, I don't know if he'll ever say it, but. No, he won't. I think that's him as a person. I know that his personality used to be much different. And then he went to some kind of like Christian conference camp thing that they were trying to send me and Ethan to back when we were still courting. And apparently here he got like his anger cast out of him as like, and since then he, that's, that's what he does. He just holds it all in. But oh. I, I'm not, I think that somebody, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. I just think it's, it's better if you let it out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, we can read it all over his face. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is you can't really hide things. I mean, it's very obvious, I think, to people that are in tune with the show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if season six were to be it, now, obviously, you guys are, you know, hit show, probably many more seasons to come. But this does, there's, there, it feels a little season finale-y in the sense, like you see the Plath family coming back together for what they say, you know. Um, you see you moving on, you working on yourself. You've got this connection with your sister. Would you be okay if this was the last season for you? Yeah. I, honestly, the end of every season, I have said, oh, I think that's the end. I don't think there's any more. And then they've, there's been another season. I think I feel pretty, like it could go either way for me. If it ended here, I would say, okay. Um, I think that you know, I can continue to share my life and I can continue to deconstruct and connect with people still doing that, like in that process. And I think that I, I have found meaningful connections from being on the show and, um, yeah, I would, I would feel okay. If it continued, I would say, well, you know what, there's a lot more things to deconstruct in my life and kind of sift through. And it's a parallel to people who don't. Um, and so, yeah, I, I could honestly go either way. Do you still like doing reality TV? Is there a universe where you would do another show? Would you do Traders? Would you do, uh, you know, Lifetime seems to be hiring everybody that leaves any network. I mean, would you do other reality? I think I would. I think there's a lot of like really fun shows out there that I didn't even know about. I mean, I didn't grow up watching TV, so I didn't even know about all the different opportunities out there. And in the past, like six months, I've started watching these other like reality shows. And a lot of times it's people who come off, you know, other shows. Um, but paying more attention to the things that are out there and what's going on, I've started like making my little list of things that I think would be fun that I don't have to do. But if the opportunity came around, I'd say yes, probably, because it looks like a lot of fun. And listen, if it's any kind of challenge that's like military-esque, I would probably fail. Um, I... I just, I, I don't do well with like eating small portions and hanging from your limbs for hours on end and jumping out of planes and rolling through mud, whatever they're trying to do to like tough you up. I don't think I would do well with that, but I would give it my best shot. Um, so yeah. Okay. Wait, but what shows have you been watching that you could see yourself on is like traders, one of them or traders is one of them that I was watching. I was watching big brother. Um, okay. 
And there's, I mean, a, a ton of other shows like Dancing with the Star. That would be super cool and super fun. Do I think that I'd probably fall on my face night one? Yeah. Would I still give it a go? Yeah. I would try to pretend that that was the move. Um, that's what we practiced. They um, haven't asked you to do Dancing with the Stars? That You haven't been no. asked yet? Really? No. I think that's coming. I think that would be fun. Oh my God. You'd be amazing on that. Yeah, absolutely. Would you ever do, you know, I, I wonder how you feel about this, you know, shows about like Mormonism are so big now. And I feel like cults and, you know, it's, just, it's only getting yeah. bigger. I mean, would you do a show around Christian fundamentalism and these kind of Christian, would you do, I mean, it's so hot. If I felt like they would do justice to the deconstruction process, then yes. Mm -hmm. I think that I've watched a couple where I was like, okay, you kind of painted this as just an alternate lifestyle instead of actually really getting into all the layers of it. And then I've watched a few where I was like, wow, I don't know how those people talked about all those experiences because that is so raw um, and so real. But I, yeah, I would definitely consider it. I think, like I said, you know, going on reality TV as a really young adult and gaining an Instagram following or whatever, I didn't even really know what to do with it. It was like, all right, I guess they'll keep sharing pictures I want to share. And now I'm at the point where it's like, I actually have a, a real use for this platform and it's connecting with other people who have deconstructed. And I think that that's probably my best use of it right now. Um, so yeah, I would definitely consider that. Last question. I mean, you, you mentioned it now you've built such a big brand for yourself. I mean, do you see yourself? And I think you'd signed with maybe like a talent agency. I mean, mm -hmm. you see yourself staying in this space, like doing acting, doing modeling, doing podcasting. Like, would you like to do any of that? I think, um, <laughs> I think having a public life since I was 20, I, I don't, not having a public life anymore would feel really weird. And also would just feel so open-ended of, okay, I kind of, in a sense, grew up on TV and then it just ends and it's done. I think I would definitely, at least for now, keep my public life. I think that it would be hard not to. Um, even if the show ended, it's not like everybody would unfollow me the next day. So at the end of the day, like I still do have some kind of platform. Um, yeah, I honestly, I just want to be open to what other opportunities come my way and whatever makes the most sense. And it's really fun to look five, 10 years down the line. What do I want to get done? What do I want to do? And instead, I'm just trying to treat it as what's the next opportunity in front of me? And does it make sense for me and what I want my life to look like or not? Um, I'm just trying to stay flexible. I do have a, an agency I signed with that they do mostly like social media collaborations, which I have a love-hate relationship with. Um, on the one hand, it's kind of fun to work with brands. On the other hand, I'm like, I don't I don't want that to just be what my Instagram space is about. It's just um, pushing things. So I try to be selective and picky about that. And yeah, just play it by ear. Take each opportunity as it comes. Oh my gosh. Olivia Plath, congrats on season six. It is so good. I hope you give yourself so much credit of how far you've come. Oh my God. I mean, it's crazy to still watch you guys. And uh, truly, truly, I mean it. I, I, I try to find balance on my podcast and be kind to you guys in the sense of like, you're so good to show us your life, but also, you know, kind of critique and have fun with the scenes. So, but I really want to give you credit. You've done a great job working on yourself and, um, Wow. How you've shared your truth on that show. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you. It's probably also wild for you because you had us on like season one all the way till now. I had you on during the pandemic. We did this crazy, <laughs> just like you were on our, like, I think we did StreamYard. You just like popped on. You are amazing. Then I had you and Ethan together. Yeah. And that's when you guys were really, I think you were trying to do therapy. You were really in it. You guys were kind of <laughs> united against Kim and Barry. And, but I always, you know, it's like, you never want to root against people, but I could tell yeah. you just had something in you that was like, it was different than him. You know, like he, mm -hmm. you can see he wants that traditional life. You know, he said it a million times now, right? He wants a farm. He'd be happy fixing up a truck with a woman that wanted to cook clean and have kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that there's women like out that out there, but it ain't me. No, it's not you. And that makes me feel better. You're blocked. I'm blocked. So maybe hopefully when <laughs> he, <laughs> now that he's unblocked you, he'll, I'm like, I have no ill will against you. Come tell your story. I mean, you know, people want to hear from him and I'm sure there's a lot of women that would love to be with him. But then again, maybe there's something about you he really does love. Maybe there is that part of him that wants out, you know, and you, you bring that to him. I don't know. 
I don't know. I can't figure it out either. And I lost a few sleepless nights thinking about it. And then I said, you know what? Not worth my time. Yeah, you're like, you know what? Um, I'd like to lovely be a divorced. Thank yes. you. Um, you know, <laughs> somebody else figure it out. Bye bye. All right, Olivia Plath, we wish you all the best. Everybody continue to watch. Welcome to Plathville. Unbelievable season six. And we'll see the next steps for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. So good to see you.